So Dr. Stukas, what do we know so far about the clinical trials for these vaccines? Do we know what the diversity of the people uh, with asthma and allergies uh, who are included in the research? Yeah, and again, thanks for having me. Um, this, the, the transparency behind uh, these trials is amazing. Uh, you know, anybody can log on today to watch the FDA discuss all of this and Pfizer released all their data for everybody to review, anybody to review, I should say. So I just wanna say that, you know, all of this is out there. Um, we don't know specifically how many people had asthma or food allergies or allergic rhinitis or things like that because they didn't break it down by that when they report this. Um, there are other categories that are, are sort of more important in the grand scheme of things to try to figure out whether the vaccine was safe and effective, um, but they weren't excluded. Uh, the only potential allergy that was excluded specifically were those uh, participants who may have had a severe allergic reaction to prior vaccines or any of the specific ingredients contained in this Pfizer vaccine. And of note, and I think we'll talk about this more, the Pfizer vaccine does not contain any food proteins, food allergens, food derivatives. It wasn't grown in embryos, so there's no egg or anything like that. Um, so we have to assume that there were people, you know, these are some of the more common chronic conditions, especially asthma. We have to assume that there were people with asthma and allergic rhinitis and atopic dermatitis and, um, and food allergies enrolled in these trials. Uh, and, and we're not seeing any, you know, big scary signals, um, you know, from any group really, uh, so let alone those. 